Hello, Doc Sketchy here again. This time to show you my new Sketchy Labs frequency shifter. Dun da da da. So here it is. Um, it took about a, a it took about two years to finally get this thing behind a panel. Here's the old frequency shifter on a slab of plywood. This is part of it. I'm gonna be talking about this later. So. What I want to do in this video is I want to do I, I want to both demonstrate the, the frequency shifter, but first I want to explain what exactly a frequency shifter is. This particular unit is a Bode frequency shifter. I think that's how you pronounce it, Bode, Bode. And um, what is a Bode? What is a Bode frequency shifter? Well, I've got this helpful diagram taped up to my uh, cabinet up here to show you. So this is what a Bode frequency shifter does. It takes an audio signal in and it splits it in a 90 degree phase displacement network into its component sine and cosines. Now, we all remember, what is it, Fourier's theorem that says that every, uh, every audio signal can be represented as a bunch of sine waves. And what the 90 degree phase displacement network does, it turns out to be this bad boy here. A 90 degree phase displacement network takes that signal take, and every single one of its component sine waves is converted to, uh, uh, it creates sine and cosine waves from every sine wave. So no matter what frequency you look at in that audio signal, um, you'll get a sine wave coming out on one pin and a cosine wave coming out on, on another pin. Now, the next thing is the quadrature oscillator. This is just a VCO generating typically a sine wave but it has to also generate a cosine wave. Now for that in my build, I've used uh, a simplified version of the Rubicon uh, through, Z, through, through 0FM oscillator that I designed a few years ago. Um, and I've, I've, but I've made it into a dual core oscillator and I've set it up so that the second core always generates the cosine um, of the triangle. And then the, and then the two triangles are converted to sines. So, what we have is we have all the sines and cosines from the audio signal and all the sines and cosines from the, or the sine and cosine from the, from the oscillator. We take the, the sines from the audio and the sine from the oscillator and we multiply those together in a multiplier. And we take the cosines and we multiply those together in a second multiplier. So we get sine times sine at two different frequencies. And that works out to, through, through the magic of trigonometric identities, that works out to this formula when we multiply the two sines together, cosine of the, uh, the audio frequency minus the oscillator frequency minus, cos minus cosine of the audio frequency plus the oscillator frequency. And then in, from, this, from this multiplier, when we multiply the two cosines together, we get a very similar but ever so slightly different formula that has a plus sign here instead of a minus sign. Now we have these, these two trigonometric identities. If we if we take, if we sum the two of them up, which is take this one, sum it up with this one, we get cosine of the audio frequency minus the oscillator frequency. So this will shift, this will shift all the frequencies of the audio signal down by whatever the frequency of the oscillator is. If we invert this out, this output, and add it to this output uh, through the wonders of algebra again. <laughs> we get the uh, cosine, which is of the two, the two frequencies added up. So this one will shift the frequency of the audio signal up by the, um, by the audio frequency, by, by, the, by the VCO's frequency. So this one shifts down and this one shifts up. And then what I've done is I've added the two together into a, into a buffered potentiometer so that I can blend the two. And then, it, and then I take feedback from that output back to the input and that's important because uh, if you want to use the uh, frequency shifter as a phaser, which I'll be demonstrating a little bit later, then, um, then that's, uh, that's an important thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the, all the, comp the, the various component parts and show you how well they work. Okay, what I'd like to talk about next is the actual build. So if we have, have a look at the, at, at the build here, this build consists of five PCBs. The one next to the panel is the panel PCB. Then the other four are all the circuitry. The, the next one out from the panel is the phase displacement network. The next one after that is the, um, 
the dual multipliers and the uh, output amplifiers. And that one has, uh, as you see, it has some fairly tall black electrolytic capacitors on it for decoupling. So it has to be spaced quite, quite a bit, quite, a, quite far away from the next PCB. Then the final two PCBs are the oscillator circuit split into two PCBs. Now, so if we look at our diagram again, this is on, this is on one PCB. This is split between two PCBs and all this circuitry is on, a is, on, is on one PCB. All right. Now, I want to show you the oscillator output. I've got, I've got a sine wave, a little bit bright. Uh, so the sine wave is, uh, we, we, can, we can listen to this. And I can, I can adjust coarse and fine, coarse and fine oscillator. Uh, now, these are two sine waves in quadrature. So we can think of one of them as the sine and the other one as the cosine. They're 90 degrees out of phase. Now, one cool thing about this, uh, this unit is that I put these switches on here. And these switches actually drive a digital, um, a, a digital analog uh, multiplexer. And so I, I have four different waveforms at my disposal here. I have sine, triangle, zigzag, and uh, square. And they're all in quadrature. So if we look at the output, here's the sine. Let's listen to these. There's the sine. There's the triangle. There's the zigzag. And there's the square. So those can be selected by manipulating those two switches. Okay, um, there is also uh, linear and exponential FM. So exponential FM just gives me fairly broad frequency control. Linear FM gives me less broad control. Oops. But um, the thing about linear FM is that if I linear FM in the, in the audio range, um, I can get through zero. So there's um, there's an example of through zero. And as we see here, even in through zero FM, the two waves are always it always in quadrature. They're always 90 degrees apart, which is pretty cool. Okay. So I'll turn off linear FM and I'll turn symmetry back to full and uh, I'll, next thing I'll show you is the um, phase displacement network oh but before I do that I want to show you how these two these two sine waves are in quadrature and I know they're in quadrature because if I put my if I put my um, oscilloscope in XY mode what I get is a Lissajou figure that is basically perfectly circular a perfectly circular Lisa Zhu figure means that I have a, a sine and a cosine wave. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to talk about is the phase displacement network. That's this bad boy here. This is another unit that I built for the old, the old prototype. So this is, consists of 12 all-pass filters in two rows of six all-pass filters. The input comes in on one end and goes through both sets of filters, and you, it comes out at two outputs. And those two outputs will be at exactly 90 degrees, well, 89 to 91, actually, degrees uh, separate from each other at all frequencies. Now, I'm feeding, the, um, I'm, I'm feeding this thing a, about a 16 hertz sine wave from my Rubicon. And um, these are the two outputs at this point, and they're in quadrature. Now, we know they're in quadrature because I'm going to put this in um, XY mode, make it a little bigger and move it to the center. And you see we have a more or less perfect circular Lisa Zhu figure. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start increasing the frequency. So this is 16 Hertz. This unit, this unit is designed to provide more or less perfect uh, quadrature between about 15 Hertz and 15,000 Hertz. 
So I'm going to increase the, the frequency by octaves. So I've got, it, I've got it tuned to 16 hertz right now. So here's 32 hertz, still circular. Here's 64, circular. 128, circular. 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, and 16,384, roughly. And so you see between, uh, between 16 and 16,000 hertz, this thing generates more or less perfectly circular Lisa Zhu figures, which means that every frequency in the audio signal is essentially in perfect quadrature uh, in the, uh, over the entire audio range. And that's what we need in, to happen in this box. Okay? Okay, so the next thing I want to show you are the multipliers, these dual multipliers. Now these are four quadrant multipliers, which means that they multiply, they multiply both positive and negative signals, X and Y, by, uh, by each other to get both positive and negative output. Um, and the two, since the, so, so I'm feeding a sine wave from the Rubicon, a fairly fast sine wave. And um, since it's, those, that sine wave is being multiplied by the sine and the cosine of, of the oscillator on the frequency shifter, I will get two outputs. So we can see on the scope the two outputs from the two different multipliers. And we see they're 90 degrees out of phase, and they're more or less perfect um, in perfect uh, four quadrant multiplication. So this is if I multiply by sine waves. What if I multiply by triangle waves? Here's, here's multiplication by triangle waves. Here's multiplication by zigzag, which is cool. And then here's multiplication by square, which doesn't look like anything. But uh, zigzag is really cool. Uh, the most useful of these, of course, is the sine wave multiplication. Okay, so this shows that I'm getting more or less perfect four quadrant multiplication and that everything is nicely 90 degrees out of phase. All right, so the next thing I'll do is demonstrate the unit. And the best way to do that is with a guitar.